I've decided to come down to my local club lake today, um, which is Blunt's, Blunt's Lake on the Chelmsford Angling ticket. I got here at 6 a.m. this morning, which is when you're allowed to start. And um, I'm in this, in this swim, which is one of the flyers on here. And um, I've got a couple of rods out on two likely looking spots. Um, not far, on the far bank, fishing in round about sort of four or five foot of water, something like that. And I'm hoping that the sun's going to get up at some point this afternoon, which it should do, um, because it's a really nice spot for them to come into when that water's quite warm, uh, when that water's quite, um, yeah, when it gets you know sunny and the water gets a little bit warmer. So, yeah. But um, I was hoping to have had a fish by now, to be fair. I've been here for three hours. The rods have been in. Um, I put a little bit of bait over each rod. And like I say, I was hoping to have had a fish by now, but unfortunately nothing has occurred, which is, um, which is a bit odd because like I say, I'm in the flyer and it normally does hold quite a few fish, but um, it's never a problem. I fish quite a lot on my, off of my barrow, so I'm always ready to move. Um, so that's not a problem. And yeah, we're gonna give it a little while and see how we get on. I might give it another half an hour to an hour, see how we get on. And if nothing occurs, um, we might have a little move. See how we get on. Down without breaking my neck. Oh, come off. Oh. I was fishing back leads, uh, which is another little tip to give some guys. When you're, when you're fishing some of these club lakes, a lot of the people just fish with a line straight out. They don't use back leads at all. Um, and a lot of these places I tend to fish back leads and the bottom's great out there. I can, I can utilize the back lead in the right way, but I think that might have been a fish coming through and it might have actually picked my back lead up close, maybe. I mean, you can't never tell 100%. Hooks, hook point's really, really sharp. Nothing wrong with the rig, not tangled up in any way. But um, yeah, we'll get it back out there on the spot and see if we can uh, get another bite. So I've had no action on that right rod, and that's a, a banker rod, but I might be a little bit too tight to the bank, so I'm just gonna bring it off a little tiny bit. I did feel a drop while I was out there. Um, felt like four or five foot, but it is fairly deep there, and um, yeah, I feel like I'm a little bit too close, so I'm just gonna bring it off a little tiny bit and see if we can get a bite from there. So I've just reeled in, and as you can see, it's actually picked up a little bit of um, little bit of chod there, a little, little bit of detritus on the bottom. It's not that it was um, hooked on that particularly, but it could have been sitting over that. And that tells me it's not as clean as I thought it was. Although I'd had a lead about there, and um, I did have a feel about it before I decided to leave the hook bait there, um, that tells me it's not as clean. So therefore, I'm definitely gonna bring the rod back toward me a little tiny bit, just off the, just off the bank there, and um, hopefully pick up, a, pick up a carp. Okay. Oh, that's the one. It's definitely a way. I'll get down here without breaking my neck. <sighs> right, 
right, that's on. 100% that's on. So we're into our first carp, which is great. And I don't want to speak too soon, but um, it feels half decent. Nice to have a bite anyway. And that left rod, I've moved from one spot to another, so I'm really pleased that's, that's paid off. Um, yeah, perhaps the bite that came before, which is the one we lost, perhaps that was a, um, an aborted take as such, but very rare that it happens on that rig, but that's carp fishing for you, I suppose. But let's see if we can get this one in and uh, see what we've got on the end. He's just about ready. You just see the hook bait hanging out of his mouth. Thank you very much. that do? Perfect. Okay. So the first one, and it's always nice to get the first bite is in the net and in my hands. So I'm really, really happy with this one. As I say, we are kind of just going into spring and it's really nice to get the first bite on the first session. And um, hopefully we've got a few more to come. Um, it's quite a prolific venue this, so there's lots and lots of carp in here. And um, yeah, let's hope there's a few more to come. So I'm gonna show you the rigs, walk, talk through the rigs that I use and the baiting approach that I use on a lot of these type of venues, it's very much the same. I, you know, if it's not broke, don't, don't try to fix it. And um, once that I know that something works on a venue, I often stick to it a lot, you know. So um, yeah, I'm gonna talk you through the rigs, show you exactly what I'm using bait-wise, and we'll go from there. So rig-wise, I'm using a Spectre fluorocarbon leader, which is the new leaders out at the moment. Um, this one's in a green, uh, camo green, which is a lovely colour. I'm also using the new uni clips that we've had. For, well, they've been out for some time now, and they're a fantastic clip for utilising both, you know, lead, you know, dropping the lead and keeping the lead. So, uh, yeah, they're a great little, uh, great little setup, which I'll show you a little bit more in detail later. Rig-wise, I'm using a 25-pound camo, which is a fantastic look link. Got a little bit broken there, which just, just allows for a bit more flexibility. And, uh, and a rig that I've tied up, I've been using for some time now, which I've called the Haired Rotary Rig, um, which is basically like a, a Ronnie or a spinner, but we call it a rotary rig. And I've just added a, a small hair there, which makes the whole thing much more effective in my eyes. And um, yeah, that's the rig I'm using. And I'm just gonna put a nice new, fresh yellow pineapple pop-up on there, cast that back out and hopefully have another fish. So I just want to talk you through um, the new leaders that I'm using at the moment. Now these are PVC coated fluorocarbon um, spectre leaders, the Ridge Monkey ones, and um, they're fused at both ends. So there's no need for any knots, you don't have the tiny knots, they're fused. Um, they incorporate um, the new uni clip. I'll say the new uni clip, it's been out for some time now. Um, and um, they come in various colours, so you can match these to the lake bed. They're very heavy, obviously, because of the fluorocarbon um, sensor, and, um, and they, they settle nicely over most bottoms, which is, uh, which is perfect for what you want. And they're really easy to attach, like I say, because they've got the fused uh, loops in the, in the end there, all you do literally is, is create a loop in your main line and loop to loop them, which is the strongest joint, really, you can have. So the UniClip itself is a really ingenious little idea. And um, basically it's two clips in one. So you can either drop the lead, um, which we try not to do as much as possible, because we do not want to be just, just, just you know, dropping and discharging leads for, you know, for the sake of it. 
um, or you can actually retain the lead if you're fishing in a particular situation. So if I was fishing like in a really, you know, a really tight snag or very, very dense weed in or, in or around very, very, uh, very, very dense weed, then I would want to kind of like drop the lead if I can. And um, it's really, really easy to do. Like I say, it's, it's two in one. So all you do is at the moment, that is in drop mode. I can show you that it's in drop mode and the lead will just literally pull off the clip. So then they're separated. But if you actually wanted to keep the lead, all you do is literally pull the clip out of its housing and then you just turn it round so it's facing the other way. And just on top of this side, you'll see a small hole and you push the pin into the hole, make sure it's pulled in nice and tight and until it comes out the other side and you'll see that that now is in keep mode basically. So it will no longer discharge the lead. Very, very safe rig. If um, in the event of a crack off, these do actually pull out of the housing, which is another added bonus feature. Um, as you can see, they come out, which is great. But if you, like I say, if you want to keep the lead, you just pop it back in the hole and the job is a good one. So for today, I'm not fishing anywhere that's particularly dangerous. There's no snags, nothing under the water, and there's no weed. It's a little bit silty, but nothing to bother me. And therefore, I'm keeping the lead because I do not want to lose my lead. And that is in the, the keep mode, basically. So yeah, it's um, perfect. That was a savage liner, an absolute savage liner. I thought it was a way, but it pulled up. And you can always tell actually when there's a liner. I get a lot of this, people, people always wonder if there's a liner or a bite. You see it a lot, they pick the rod up and strike into it. But whenever it's a liner, it'll pull up tight and it'll drop back down to the same position that you had the bobbin in in the first place. Um, that's how you can tell it's a liner, and that was definitely a liner. So the right rod has been quite slow considering, especially compared to the left one, I've had quite a lot of action. Um, as in liners, so fish are definitely around, but the right one's definitely been a bit slow. So what I'm gonna do is, and this has worked in the past here quite a lot, is I'm just gonna clip on a little tiny bag of crumb. Just that little bit more attractiveness into the swim, a little bit of smart liquid on there, and I'm gonna cast that out onto the same sort of spot and see if that um, gives, you know, gets us a bite any quicker. But um, yeah, I'm gonna give that a go, so I'm gonna reel that one in. Okay. I've just bought a fresh hook bait on there, nice fresh hook bait, which is a little pop-up, little mainline pop-up. And all I'm going to do is just clip on some pre-made, I've pre-made a couple of little tiny crumb bags, and I'm just going to clip that on. Just past the barbs on that, can't come off. And we're going to go, just going to cast that out and see how we get on. Lovely. So as much as, um, you know, you work a swim sometimes in the hope that you're going to get another bite. Now, there's no two ways about it. There are definitely a few fish around the area. But while we were just standing there chatting, just seen a fish show, not just once or twice, but three times, literally a couple of swims up. And I did hear it show earlier this morning. So there's obviously more activity there. And with that being, I'm gonna reel in and go for a move. And it's one thing that you should do. If you hear fish moving, or you see fish moving somewhere, you know, try not to lay out all your gear, try and keep some on the barrel so it don't take five minutes to get packed up and moved. And uh, that's exactly what I'm gonna do.
so we've moved. We've moved with up sticks, we've moved. I've just put the rods in and literally just had a liner straight away. So we're definitely, definitely off fish. Fingers crossed, we'll catch another one. We're in. <laughs> and just like that, we're in. So, if it's not happening where you are, up sticks and move. Especially if you're seeing loads of activity somewhere else. If no one's in there, or if no one else has moved, then you need to move on them. The rods have literally been out two minutes, three minutes. Just set them and we've got a fish on already. So, second fish of the session. Probably the smallest one in the lake and the ugliest one. But all, all creatures, great and small, love them, love them all. I'll slip him back and with any luck, we'll have another one. to just kind of talk you through some of the tips and, and the ways to go about approaching these sort of waters and why these sort of waters are so um, important to your angling, really. Um, they contain loads of small fish, this particular venue, as we know. Um, they can become, they're very productive in the winter, especially in the colder months, all year to be fair, but they will carry on fishing. And they are a great place to come and hone your skills, as in, you know, when you're worried about your rigs, you know, using particular rigs or particular presentations. And when you go to other places, especially harder venues, um, if you know that they work on places like this, then you're gonna, you're gonna know that they're gonna work on other places. So once you've got your bait and approach in place, um, you know exactly what you're doing. And like today, I've kept things very simple, you know, 10 mil boilies, um, a fair bit of liquid on top of them, and making sure that I'm feeding every hour, which is just something that once you find that works, uh, you can employ that wherever you go. Um, and then you've got a confidence in yourself then to be able to sort of go on to other waters. But the other thing as well is keeping mobile. Um, you know, we've seen, started off in one swim uh, where there was activity and then that kind of died down a little bit and then we've seen activity elsewhere. And so, you know, we've utilised that and moved on that straight away. Um, one of the things I've always said is to try and keep everything on your barrow. So if you've got, you know, if you turn up with your barrow, try and keep all your stuff on it. Don't take everything off. Take your tea, you know, your tea kit off maybe. Leave your tackle box on there, you know, just take your chair off. Um, and that way, if you do ever see anything move, you know, show in a few swims up, you can literally move like on the flick of a switch, you know. Um, and that's what you want to be, try and be mobile. And especially this time of year, I mean, it works any time of year, but more so this time of year because it's generally pretty cold. You know, once you've got your rods out, you're sitting there trying to keep yourself warm. Um, but by doing that, um, not only do you keep yourself motivated, but you keep yourself warm um, and you learn as you go along, you know. So that's what we've done today. We had one fish in one swim and, you know, we turned up and had a fish straight away out of the other swim. So it's just proof of the pudding that, you know, keeping yourself motivated and that kind of simple baiting approach will work more or less wherever you go.
So we're getting toward the end of the session, the end of the day, and um, we've actually moved back into the original swim, the flyer swim. Very often, sometimes when you move out, and um, although the swim goes a bit quiet, when you move out um, and come back into here, they've actually come back. So um, we're gonna put the rods out, give it another 20 minutes and see how we get on. But I mean, we moved, you know, we've been very, very uh, consistent with our angling, should we say. We've moved a few times, had a couple of fish, and, um, and now we're back again. So I'm gonna put this last rod out, give it 20 minutes and see how we get on. But fingers crossed, we have a good one. Right, so the rig I've been using today is a type of spinner rig. We call it the rotary rig, um, but I call it the haired rotary rig. So instead of having a swivel, conventional swivel on the shank of that hook, um, I've got the conventional hair. Now the hair has been a fantastic part of the fish, fish catching rig for I don't know how many years. Um, so it made complete sense to add that to an already amazing fish catcher. Since I've done that, um, the catch rates have kind of gone through the roof a little bit really. Um, but although I don't like to say that, but I'd like to say it's, it's kept them very consistent. And um, it's very, very easy to tie. You can tie it with an array of different types of uh, hook link materials but I'm going to show you and take you through how I tie it um, my way. Right, so this is how I tie it. Basically, you take a length of camo X, which is around about six inches, and strip that off completely, so all you've got left is the braid. You tie a loop in the braid and mount your hook bait. Put a little stop in the, in the hook bait so it can't come through, and then all you're going to do is pass that braid through the actual eye of the hook. Then you're going to whip the hook, knot this knot style, up the hook shank eight or ten times and then back down the hook shank two or three times just so that that knot can't slip or it stops it from slipping and then pass the braid back through the eye like you would a normal rig and then what we do then is take a bit of scissors and we snip off basically the braid that comes through the eye and then you're left with a piece of braid basically going through the eye with a hook bait attached to it next up what we do is take a bit of shrink tubing pass that over the hook itself and over the knot, and then we take a rotary swivel, and we pass that through the eye, and then pass the shrink tubing back over the rotary swivel, and then we steam it on the kettle. And then what you're after is a nice aggressive angle like so. And then from then on, you can use any kind of boom section, but for the boom section, I use the Camo X again, but this time it's, it's the coated part. Um, I don't strip it down at all. I leave it semi, semi stiff if you like, but it's still quite flexible. Um, and then at the end of that, we just tie a loop, a standard loop like you would in any other hook link. And that is how you tie my haired rotary rig. Not again! That's on, isn't it? That's on. Yes! Yay! <laughs> Couldn't make it up, could you? <laughs> and that is the end of the session. <laughs> you couldn't make it up. So an absolute screamer from a stick. Just unbelievable. Never had that before in 30 years of angling. But there's always a first time. Thank you and good night.